What's up guys? This is Casey and welcome back to the channel. So I thought long and hard about making this video today. And the reason is because my thousands of followers who follow this channel are all about trying to learn financial education and learn how to be better investors and traders. And while that's good and while we make very content filled videos, there is a specific type of trading that I feel needs to be exposed that is not exposed. There is an entire market around providing deception, uh, not only on YouTube, not only with blogs, not only with seminars, but just the entire industry itself. And I think today I need to at least in good conscience share with you guys what I see as extreme, extreme deception and uh, honeypots so that I can hopefully save, if not thousands, at least one or two people from losing all of their money and then thinking that they are failures. And that type of trading is day trading. The reality is, if you guys are trying to day trade, if you look online on YouTube, you will see tons and tons and tons of videos uh, about day trading packages you will see something uh, you know the daily day traders you will see guys talking about making tons of money fifteen hundred dollars a day scalping my trading setup this guy's makes twenty two thousand dollars a day five hundred dollars a day passive income his hands are in the air just money's just coming in life is just great five day trading beginner strategies well well that's that's because i Chiefs fan here, but if you take a look here, you know, the life of the Gen Z trader. Uh, one of the financial education channels who I follow, who I'm not affiliated with at all uh, in the slightest, don't even know the person, but I think has very, very good content, uh, is a financial education channel called Benjamin. And he actually broke down uh, this particular person's daily traders video because this guy's selling packages. And he basically broke down and said that he tried the guy's package to try to save a lot of people a headache. And he found that he pretty much just broke even. Uh, he said he actually lost a lot of money in the first go around, and then the second go around, second trade he made he uh, he he made his he made some money, but he said over the long haul you would you would in essence you would lose money. And it's highly risky and highly leveraged. Um, you know, take a look here. Let's take a look at Warrior Trading, right? And again, this isn't a knock on any specific platform or package or slander or any individual investor or business person. That is not the intent here. What the intent is here is to discuss and highlight how these professional traders are selling packages. And if companies or if individuals were making tons and tons and tons of money, they wouldn't be selling you guys $6,000 packages. That doesn't mean that this person is not a successful day trader. It means that it just doesn't make sense. You guys remember this guy here, Timothy Sykes? What was it, 15, 20 years ago, somewhere he was on news and, you know, he said he made a million dollars selling penny stocks. Well, you know what he's doing now? He is selling packages. He's kind of disappeared. So he's not, uh, he's not, I don't believe he's day trading anymore. I don't know that to be the case, but I don't really see any videos online about him. I don't see, you know, really anything. So, you know, there's his Timothy trading challenge. And this is what you see from a lot of guys is you see, them selling packages and selling seminars and typically anytime you see something with seminars or people selling you day trading packages run the other direction um i've purchased a few of these packages i've looked at them they're not they're nowhere near uh, anything special it's nothing that you can't look up online now why do, why do i say all of this why do i why am i making this video the reason being is because there is this uh, fantasy that is sold around day trading that anyone and everyone can do it if you just work a little hard enough. But in reality, that's not the case. And the reason that's not the case is because what you are in essence doing is you are trading against algorithms. Now, keep in mind that in the stock market, 70 to 75 percent of all of the tra uh, traffic all of the trades are large large big well institutions and they're not making trades just to make trades 
uh, 70, 75 percent of all the traffic is not only by large institutions, but it's by AI. If you guys don't do anything else, if you do nothing else and you turn off the video at this point and you're like, OK, I don't want to hear this guy anymore. Do me this favor. I want you to watch two videos and then I, uh, on YouTube and then I want you to come back to this video and leave a comment and then tell me if you feel anything different. I want you to watch Flash Crash on YouTube. Amazing, amazing video. And I, oh, I don't want to do that there. And I want you guys to watch Wall Street Code. Watch those two videos on YouTube. And the reason I want you to watch those two videos is because these videos break down the complexity and the secrecy involved behind how the entire stock market works. One of the videos talks about how there is a, a quant investor, a quant trader, excuse me. He actually was one of the, the few guys that designed and developed the AI algorithms that do day trading. And he talked about how he basically, his business went under because other quant large institution day traders were out quanting his quants. And now he's like, he day trades for himself with like five or six other, you know, programmers and developers and highly skilled day traders all in a room, just trying to do nothing, but just put their heads together and try to figure out how to outsmart the AI algorithms. Keep in mind, this guy wrote the book on quant day trading, developed one, and he got knocked out the game. The problem with the problem with day trading is when you are purchasing stocks, when you are buying a stock, do you ever notice how when you buy a stock that it drops the moment you buy it or when you sell a stock, it goes up the moment you sell it and you keep asking yourself, why does this keep happening over and over and over and over again, right? And then you say, fine, well, I'll just hold it. Okay, fine, it drops more. And you say, fine, then I'll sell it fast and let word for it to drop more, then I'll buy it again. Oh, wait, it never doesn't, it doesn't drop anymore, it goes up. And it's because there's artificial intelligence you are buying into an uh, ocean that is not your ocean, okay? There are five to ten large institutions that have all the visibility into all order flow. They know every single order that, gets, that goes across the stock market exchange, including institutions. They know whether it's their, whether it's their buys, their sales. They know where retail is purchasing at. They know where retail wants to sell at. They control the news. They control the market flow. They control all of it. Um, you guys ever notice how um, if you look on the news and there's like, I don't know, MSNBC or something, and they talk about how the markets are going to, you know, crash because of blah, 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 right? So you look you look back a few months ago, people were talking about how, oh, yeah, interest rates are going to rise. Markets are going to go down. Interest rates are going to rise. Markets are going to go down. Interest rates are going to rise. Markets are going to go down. What happened? Markets went up. Markets went up. As a matter of fact, the day that the Federal Reserve announced, confirmed that they were going to raise rates like the Fisher day that happened, the markets bounced. Completely contrary, but that's what happened. Or how about, uh, let's go, well, I don't know, hell, you know, let's go back to the, uh, and of course, you know, we know now in hindsight, right, what happened, but let's go back to the to the horrible, horrible uh, pandemic crash, right? Well, we already know what happened, right? We, we know now that the Federal Reserve stepped in and just put in tons and tons of money. But you know what we were being fed on the news every day? We were being fed fear, fear, and fear. So I don't know about you, but a lot of people here didn't buy this because in the news at this time, we were thinking, country was going to stay shut down. There was news of martial law. There was just tons of things. No one's buying this. Okay. But if you were an insider, you know what this is here? This is institutions buying. This is institutions all the way up. The institutions knew something we didn't know, which takes me to my next point. Insider information. The thing is, Insider information, insider trading, although we are told as retail people that it's illegal, which we know technically, yes, it is illegal, technically by the books. It is a very, very common thing that goes on inside of Wall Street. It is super common. It is just what they do. The buddy knows a buddy who knows a buddy who hears that a particular uh, pharmaceutical drug is or is not going to get FDA approval. They go out, they start doing 
uh, stock accumulation. And then the next thing you know, what they'll do is, is they will release an article that says that clinical trials are really good. And you'll read this because you've been following the stock because you think it's going to go really well. You say, oh, clinical trials show that, you know, reduces, I don't know, diabetes by 25%. You're like, oh, yeah, I know it. I know it. Yep, yep, yep. Next week or the next month is going to be when the FDA approval is going to get announced. This has to be a good sign. Well, meanwhile, they know on the inside that it's not going to get approved because it also increases the rate of blood clots. And I'm just making up something here. But they will release a news article on, you know, pick your favorite news station uh, that the clinical trials was successful. So you were like, yep, it's time to go in. I'm going to go all in. And then in the meantime, while you're going in, they will show the stock will begin to pop. Because you're thinking that, great, it's going to start to really shoot up once the FDA gets approved. I'm going to get in early. Yep, because it's like every, everything, the writing's on the wall. And then everything goes up. But then the next thing you know, the stock drops. Let me show you guys another stock here. Let me show you another beloved stock. Netflix. You guys have heard of a guy named Jim Cramer? I'm sure you have. Jim Cramer, who is a character on MSNBC. Well, you know, he gets on there. He makes a lot of stock recommendations about different stocks for different reasons. He is almost always wrong. I would venture to say 90% of the time that I see he makes a recommendation, he's wrong. He got on television months and months back talking about how Netflix is a great buy. And he would he would start purchasing ahead. Uh, and I, I can't remember if he said he was purchasing ahead of the earnings or not, but he, he was encouraging people to buy Netflix. And do you know what happened with Netflix shortly thereafter? Netflix tanked. And this has happened with Jim Cramer over and over and over again. And his timing is almost always impeccable. I've never once seen Jim Cramer get on television and make a recommendation of a stock that did not do the opposite of what he says uh, it, it's going to do. Now keep in mind, he is an insider. He is a professional trader. He has been on Wall Street for, I think, 20 or 30 years. So he's on the know. But yet he gets on television and just basically leads sheep to the slaughter. I want to go back to another thing here. I want to talk about the, uh, what CNBC wrote an article here that says that most day traders lose money. Now, if you're one of the people who are trying to day trade and you keep getting stopped out or you just keep, you know, getting hammered from about trying to play options or what have you, and you're thinking that it's you, it's probably not you. And the reason it's not you, and I got a little bit off topic here, is because when you are purchasing stocks, when you're attempting to day trade, you are buying into an ocean that is not your ocean, and you are buying literally uh, you are trading in a market that sees your orders that specifically and intentionally is designed and programmed to trade against you so uh, jesse livermore talked about how he, he did a statement years and years ago when he was alive and it's I actually have it up on one of my previous wallpapers and it says that the stock market is designed to take most of the people for most most of the money for most of the people most of the time and it does that very very well the only way that it could possibly do that is if it knew and if it knows order flow, right? Like it literally has a cheat code. It knows where everyone wants to buy. It can see people purchasing it. It does it so well to the point to where even when you submit an order. So right now, you let's say Monday morning, you go to, you know, whatever, whatever the state doc, stock trading solution you use and you submit a buy order. 99.99% of the time, what happens is, is these large institutions see that you've just submitted an order to buy, I don't know, Apple. Let's just say you want to buy. It doesn't matter, right? They see the order. It goes through the exchange, through the wires. They then have um, air-based um, signals that go from, their, from the uh, stock exchanges to where the actual orders get executed or should say from from their locations and so what they do is is they see the order they see that you submitted the order they send the signal faster via the air to purchase the stock and then sell the stock back to you on the wire for just a few pennies less than what or a few pennies more than what you initially tried to buy it for and even though you try to use a limit order you still end up getting stuck with this and that's just the first way that they get you 
So I want to now break down the uh, the psychology between and how how these these algorithms, these AI algorithms that have all visibility into all stock markets and who control the stock the stock market in, uh, flow. So you do not and retail does not control stock market movement at all. So let's just get that out of the way. Uh, you take a look here on, let's say. I'm sorry, I'm going through a lot of different. Uh, here we go. Bloomberg. Releases an article that says day traders take Wall Street by storm again and record dip by. Wow. Day traders are taking Wall Street by storm. Woo. Wall Street's overwhelmed. Investors can thank retail army. Really? Retail is controlling the flow of stock markets? That's interesting. I mean, institutions control over half of all. I think it's no 70, 75, 80 percent of all stocks they control. No retail is making stocks move like this is this is a fallacy. This is what they tell you so that you don't see the traps. You don't understand that you control nothing in the stock market. Nothing. Um, even if you had one hundred million dollars cash and you purchased Apple, it's it's a blip. It's nothing. This is why a lot of the guys back in the day who used to really be successful, such as Timothy Sykes, you know, he said he made his millions of dollars and I, and I believe that he did. But you know how he made the millions of dollars? He made it in penny stocks. He didn't make it buying regular stocks. And I think he even admitted in, a, in some of his other videos, like years and years and years back, that it's just too hard to make money nowadays uh, day trading. You just can't because you're trading against algorithms. He did it in penny stocks. And the reason he was successful in penny stocks is because with penny stocks, algorithms don't play in that market. So they're not setting you up for fake outs and breakouts. They're not showing you a breakout and then turning around and then dumping. They're not showing you a huge dump and then turning around and pumping. You don't have to worry about traps down there because it's just our retail. There's not enough uh, order flow. There's not enough liquidity in those markets. So he can, you know, he can release. An, and, and by the way, if you guys know anything about day trading, you know that a very, very common old school archaic is shoot as old as the fax market i mean the, the fax machines you know relative to the stock market uh is pump and dumps where guys will you know purchase a hundred thousand dollars in a penny stock and then what they would do is, is they release an article and they will say that oh yeah the stock's about to break out and it's going to get listed on the nasdaq or the or you know or what have you in the american stock exchange and then everyone jumps in and it goes up to 300 percent, and then literally overnight it's down 500 percent and what that is, is they, you know, then they got more complex with it where they started releasing more, uh, more articles and, and started setting up the pump and dumps over three to four to five or six months. And you can make some really good gains with that. But the majority of the time, 99% of the time, people that made money with that is going to be uh, the people who, who started the pump in the first place. And that's how Timothy Sykes made his money. He, he even admitted that. You know, he said that, yeah, he made his money penny stocks. And he even talked about how he did it to where he saw the stocks he bought. And the next thing you know, it was up, you know, 500% in a day or two. And then he, you know, dropped down 300. But, you know, it was just very, very easy to do that. And then as the markets became more complicated, he's like, yeah, yeah, I couldn't do it anymore. And then he starts selling books and packages. So we no knock to him. He made his money. He definitely you know, was successful. And I'm just using him as an example. But, you know, very few people are making money here. I want to show you guys something else. I want to show you guys. Uh, over here. Do, 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 do. Where was it here? There was a UK uh, article. This is a market watch, as you guys can see. There was an article that was released. It talked about how uh, there was a fund that hired 2,000 day traders. Uh, I had it up. I can't, I don't, I don't, I can't seem to find it right now, but there was an article that talked about, uh, 200 day traders and basically the, uh, the day traders, um, the day traders, they, of the 2000, only 80 of them were able to successfully become day traders. And, and, and we don't know how long this ran on. We don't know if it was a six month or a year time frame, how much time they gave the guys. Maybe it was six months. I'm, I'm not really have to go back and pull up the article, and I'll probably link it below. But basically, he talked about how there was 2,000 professional day traders. These guys work at a professional day trading firm with the top information, 
and their job was, and they were also giving the capital, right? So maybe a hundred, two, three hundred thousand, and they even had the capital. And they, even with that, even with all of the strategies, only 80 people out of 2,000 were able to even consistently be profitable. And that could mean a hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, who knows? Then, of course, you know, the, the institutions will take a the majority of the cut of that because at that, at that point it's a prop firm, right? They, they, they front you the money to prop you up to day trade. But, um, you know, even if, if you work at a professional day trading firm, this happens not to mention, uh, I believe it was Goldman Sachs. Let me see here. Uh, I think it was Goldman Sachs. I think it was Goldman Sachs laid off. Uh, uh, sorry, I should have probably already had this up here. I think they laid off. Uh, I thought it was a little bit few more than that. So, yeah, so they did some more layoffs here, like in, I think it was in 2020. Because basically the, they were noticing that the algorithms were just, were just crushing a lot of their, uh, a lot of the traders. And so they just basically laid them off and said, we're just going to stick to the algorithm, algorithmic trading. Now, the thing is, is that you being a retail person, you are trading on the same indicators that everyone else is trading on. And you, you don't think that institutions know that you don't think that uh, that they're trading, that they that they are trading against you. They're absolutely trading against you. Not only are they trading against you, but in the movie, one of the movies that I encourage you guys to watch, they talked about how they can. They talked about the stock market um, hierarchy, about how the institutions are at the top, and then how the second tier is the is the uh, brokerages. Excuse me, is the yeah um, uh, the exchanges. Excuse me, and then you have like the mutual funds, and then you have people like that as retail traders. And he said, literally in the movie, he refers to retail traders as food. And they said, why do you call them food? He says, yeah, we call them dinner. He says that's how we eat. We eat off of the retail traders. So. It's hard for institutions to eat off other institutions because they're all trading with the quant algorithms, right? But we eat off of the retail traders. We call them food. They're guppies. It's shooting, it's shooting fish in a barrel because you have no access to, to, to their information. You don't control market movements. Um, and they have access to all order flow and they are intentionally designed to set you up. Let me give you, uh, let me show you guys here what the challenges are with actually day trading uh, when it actually comes down to the, you know what, let me give you, I'll tell you what, you guys remember Shopify, right? Shopify is, is, is dope. It's a really good online, uh, uh, online e-commerce solution to where you can, you can, um, you know, you can really make some money if you have an online business. So this is obviously on the daily charge. You can tell here, but let's go to the let's go to the five minute. All right, so let's take a look at this here. And we can really pretty much choose any particular time frame. Let's say you're trying to buy the dips, right? Let's let's just go in here. Most people, one of the one of the common strategies is to buy a stock that that pops on the five minute, right? So you buy this here, boop, pops five minutes, pops five minutes. You know, you, this is what's called a confirmation pattern. You pop, you make a few dollars here. It's still pretty flat, 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 flat. Not doing too bad. And then, boom, bottom falls out. You try to pop that again, right? The market, the AI knows that it did this last time. And so now this time around, it pops, it pops, it pops. And then it drops some more. And keep in mind, every single bar you see, every single bar from the five minute to the one minute, down to the milliseconds, down to the hour, there is logic, there is intentional logic in every single bar to set you up because they know where retail wants to buy and they basically draw the charts how they want to draw them. Now, the only possible chance to even give you even a remote opportunity to make money in the markets or position sizing. You will be upside down. I will tell you, even if you purchase 
19 out of 20 stocks, you will find the majority of the time you will almost always be upside down on the stock the moment you buy it. Uh, when's the last time you purchased a stock and you immediately were up, you were not upside down? Uh, probably almost never, right? That's not an accident. Like, that's intentional. You would think that if things were just purely 50-50 that you would be at least green half of the time, but you're not. You're red most of the time. Um, and if we just take a look here, you know, another thing. So this is on the hourly. People want to buy the hourly on the pop here. Boom. So this pops, falls off, pops again. You make some money here and then boom, you're dead in the water again. You're upside down. And so, you know, a lot of guys will say, well, then it's because you need to follow the trend. You got to follow the trend. Well, yeah, the following the trend is important, but identifying the trend is also important. And then the challenge with that is, is that uh, even when you've identified the trend, the moment you've identified the trend, uh, it's over. They, 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 they reverse the trend. And then you say, oh, okay, the trend's reversed and I'm going to go ahead and short now. And then boom, it's over. So you will find consistently over and over and over again that making money in day trading is extremely, extremely difficult because you're trading against algorithms that are that have artificial intelligence that are ultra complex that control ups and downs of markets of all stocks the spy the qqqs the american stock exchange everything institutions decide and another thing is do you also notice how when you try to buy beta based on news you're almost always wrong and then you can say well then let's just do contrarian trading right so let's just you know when Let's say give an example when Jim Cramer says to buy, I'm going to go out and short. And that's not a bad way of doing it. I think that actually is probably smart. But the challenge with that is, is that if you're wrong in that aspect and the one time that he's right, but well, then your account is wiped out and then you're caught on the short squeeze. And the next thing you know, you're short some stocks and then you're getting a margin call and then you're like, ah, oh, why did I do that? Um, the only way that I know to successfully make money in the stock market is to invest safely the other way is to if you guys are trying to really make some money in the relative short term which this channel does make some videos about is swing trading swing trading can make money but the thing with swing swing ugh, if i can speak straight today the thing with swing trading is you have to purchase stocks and still be in the know and still understand why you're buying these stocks there has to be an understanding of the market sentiment. It has to be an understanding of proper position sizing. And you have to understand the market cycles. Which stock are you purchasing? What is the market cycle for the stocks? And what is your position size relative to your entire, to your entire uh, portfolio? So for example, if you're buying QQQs here and when this touched off of the 200, I mean, this would have been a great little swing trade. 200 moving average is a uh, is a major, major support level. It's the QQQs. It's not a penny stock. It's not a small cap stock. It pops. Three, four, f five. So for four days, you would have made some money. Now, you don't know when this is going to end. So more than likely, psychologically, you probably would have been safe to just get out of here. Two days, made some money. Boom, good swing trade. You would have been upside down here. You would have been up, 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 uh, up again the next day, and then three days later, boom, you're upside down. Okay? The thing is, with this here, you're thinking, okay, great, it broke. It's probably going to continue down lower. The markets go, psych, we're not continuing lower. Oh, actually, psych, we're not continuing lower. Actually, no, we are continuing lower. Oh, I want to get out now. This thing's going to fall to the floor. It's going to fall to the floor. Look at this. This is going to fall. Oh my God, this is this is the recession. This is it. Look at that. The red and green. Oh yeah, this is this is gonna be bad, really bad, super bad. Psych. We're going up. How do you as a retail trader possibly, possibly think you're gonna make money on this? Uh you you just don't. Okay. Uh you just don't. And so I would encourage you guys that if you are going to day trade, do it with like a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars. Just buy a share, just buy one share, and see if you can consistently just be green on a regular basis. And that could just be a share of Apple, a share of um, Netflix, a share of Tesla, whatever it is you want to buy. 
buy one share of something and see if you can consistently be good agreeing on that and just follow your profit margin, your percentages on that. Um, and then if you can, then start with two shares and then start with three shares and four shares and five shares. Do not, and I repeat, do not ever, ever, ever put all of your uh, money in one stock. There's not a hundred percent, there's a hundred and ten percent chance you will lose everything. And it's just a matter of ratios and probabilities. Uh, you could be right seven, eight, nine, nine, nine out of ten times, and then the tenth, and then the eleventh time you put all your money in, you lose everything. So, guys, that's my spiel. I've gone over why I think day trading is just an awful, awful, awful thing for people to do, even for professional traders. It's extremely stressful. Um, and then one, I want to leave you guys with one last thing here. I want to, oh yeah, yada, yada, yada. Where is this set? Where is this set? Where is it? Here we go. Uh, Investopedia. You go to Investopedia and you know what it talks about <laughs> when it says the risk of day trading? Let me show you guys what it says here. It says what the risks are. Okay. Now, well, this breaks down different types of types of day, well, types of trading. Swing trading, which is what I talked about. They say the risk is high. Of course it's high. The arbitrage. Arbitrage is when you're trying to purchase a stock at a different price from a different exchange um, before the other exchange catches up. This is extremely great, but good luck doing that on a consistent basis. These arbitrage is very, very rare. Trading news. No, trading news risk is high. I've never, I, I don't know a single person, and I have never in my 10 years of trading ever, ever, ever made money trading news. Um, and then mergers and acquisitions, sure. Most of the time, this is buy the rumor, sell the news. It works. But you have to, you know, have your ear to the ground with a particular, uh, with a particular industry or a particular company. And then this is where the quote unquote insider trading comes in a lot, right? Um, but if you go over to the risk of day trading, the very first thing it says is be prepared to suffer severe financial losses <laughs> because day traders typically suffer severe financial. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to typically suffer severe financial loss. That's a good way of getting divorced, getting kicked out of your house, losing your money, losing your savings, having a drug habit, whatever, whatever. Um, yeah, severe, severe, severe financial loss. It says many of them never graduate, never graduate to making profits, making profits could just mean a dollar like literally just being able to trade enough to be positive net one dollar they should only risk money that they can afford to lose yeah because you probably will lose it and another thing day trading is an extremely stressful and expensive full-time job on youtube there's another video and i forgot the guy's name it's, it's in the uk and he talks about how he opened up a day trading firm and and he opened he showed all these guys how to day trade and like he just showed they showed to where like constantly uh, actually, you know what? I remember his name, actually. I remember his name. It was... Uh, I'm fudging it a little bit. Here we go. That's it. Million dollar... Yeah, this guy. Anton. There we go. I said Antoine. Anton. Look up this guy here. And he talks about... He has like a day trading firm. And he shows all people to day trade. And like how they all just kind of come in and out of his office one by one. And then they just, they just quit. <laughs> they just go, you know... Oh, sorry guys, I have my volume up loud and they just, they just quit. They just go, Oh, I can't take it anymore. I can't do this. And they're just walking out, you know, one by one by one. And there's like one or two people who end up finding who end up in the end, uh, actually been able to make money. Um, but even then, like they talk about like how stressful it is, how they don't like the culture of it. Like it's very, very tough. So I would also encourage you guys to watch that as well, because that gives you insight into, um, just how challenging it is. Even when you're day trading, with professional firms, right? With guys who are in the industry. Like this, this is not something you want to mess around with. Um, you just, you're literally just giving your money away. I mean, you really are. They, they know how, they know order flow. They control when stocks go up. They control when they go down. They control all the movements. They control information to the news. I mean, they know when you hit buy on a stock, they run ahead of you. It's just not a, it's just not a very, very fun thing. So stay away from it because in my mind, the institutions, it's illegal cheating, completely legal cheating in every single level. Uh, you are a guppy in the stock market when it comes to day trading. 
It's legal cheating and you're giving your money away and you would do better. And I mean this, you, you have a better chance of going to the actual casino. You literally have a better chance of making money going to a roulette table and putting it on black or red. I'm not joking. Much better chance. You have a better chance of going to play blackjack or even poker and making money in the casino than you do the stock market. So if you want to go gamble, okay, go gamble in the casino. I never thought I'd say that before. Go gamble in the casino because you got better chances, much better chances. Uh, here you have almost no chance. Day trading. Now, investing. Now we're talking different story. The stock market is, to this day, next to real estate, one of the best ways to generate wealth for retail traders. If you are investing, investing, the algorithms don't mean squat. They can't take your money. They can't steal your money and they can't trick you out because you're not trying to trick them out because they're the kings of tricking you out. Ooh, that was a tongue twister. Um, if you are like doing your due diligence and you're like, yo, listen, I love me some Tesla. Tesla's pulling back. I'm going to go ahead and put, you know, a couple thousand on Tesla and just, you know, let it ride out, you know, see what we get here. You know, these, you know, yeah, that's cool. Do that all day long. No problems, right? Like you're not worried about a couple of days. You're not getting you know shook out here because you're holding for the long haul. Like if you want to make some money in the stock market, the way to do it is invest, 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 invest. I don't even care. And I mean this. I don't even care if you put all your money in Apple or you put it all in like, you know, just from an investment standpoint, right? On pullbacks. But even with investing, I would encourage you guys to never, ever, ever put all your money into one stock and also do it all at one time. Because even when you are investing and you're buying stocks and pullbacks, it's going to pull back more and it's going to pull back more and it's going to pull back more. And that's just how the game goes, right? So if you bought this, you're like, pool, this is perfect. 200 day Apple didn't get better than that, baby. Well, yeah, it does because it fell. All right. It, it fell. And it fell three, four, five, seven, eight, nine days later, boom, now it's below the And now you're thinking, oh, shoot, this might go even, below, even, you know, further. Then, of course, we know it, you know, it, you know, it rebounded a little bit more. Then maybe we're going to have a continuation. But look at this. I mean, these are days, 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 right? And if you're day trading this, you're losing money every single bar, right? Because you're like, oh, it's, you know, it's inside of these bars. You just, you're getting crushed. You're just getting, you just like, it's literally taking candy from a baby. I guess it really is. And then look at this. Boom. Right. If you're investing. Right. If you're trading, you're going to lose money in this. Boom. Because even if you bought here, like, OK, cool. Oh, look at this. I see this breakout. Look at that breakout. Oh, yeah. It's because that's going to break out. It's going to rebound. Nope. Oh, shoot. I'm scared. I'm losing money. I want out. I want out. This is too painful. I want out. OK, cool. You want out. And then you know what happens in April? Market's going to rebound. It's going to rebound. It's going to retest. And you'd have all your money back. Investing is the way to go, guys. So that's it. That's my spiel. If you're one of the grand total, the two people who watch this video to the end, uh, consider yourself to go outside and then go get some air. Go have a cup of coffee. Go give yourself a pat on the back. Um, know that it's not the end of the world. <laughs> I know that I could be sometimes they'd be down on these videos, but it's just more along the lines because I want to be realistic when I'm breaking down stuff to you guys uh, because I want you to make money. I want you to invest. As you all know, this is a wealth building channel. So we are about making money from building wealth, institutional uh, institutional wealth, um, generational wealth, right? So I want you and your family and your children to make money, to be successful, to have financial education, understanding. That's what this is about. Uh, guys are not making money day trading. I don't care what they tell you. Um, have I made a couple of dollars? Sure. Have I lost more money than I've made day trading? Yes. Uh, swing trading, I can make money in investing. I make even more money in investing is the way to go. So I just want you guys to know that, um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you got some pretty good content. Hopefully, you know, if this helped one or two people that was about to go YOLO on some AMC or Shopify next week, that they don't do that. And that walks you off a ledge. And hopefully this video just gives you some content. So let me know what you guys think in the video below. If you did watch this to the end, I know it was kind of over the place, but I wanted to just kind of help add some light into this whole kind of pervasive, perverse day trading culture of like stock twits and 
Wall Street bets and, you know, showing these one off guys who, have you know, who bought the Tesla options at the bottom of the pandemic two years ago. Now he turned that into 15 million dollars. And it's just like, dude, I don't want to hear that. Like like that literally is the equivalent of showing how the guy or someone made, you know, hit the lottery last week, you know, in the Powerball. And I, I don't think that it happened. I'm just making that up. Right, you know, for one of the persons the lottery, and then like, oh, yep, I gotta go keep buying those lottery tickets. If I just keep buying them, I just keep buying them, I'm gonna hit two, three, four, five years later. I've spent seven, eight, nine thousand dollars in lottery tickets. I'm gonna hit. And then if you're like, wait, if I put that seven, eight, nine thousand dollars in Apple or Tesla or Microsoft or you know whoever else you want to put it in, whatever quality stock, man, I would have you know I would have got twenty five thousand dollars by now. So don't buy the hype. There's no such thing as quick profits, at least not as retail traders. If you're an institution trader, you're making a killing of quick profits. All you do is make money. Um, Goldman Sachs, I think they said they did 247 like trades or something like that. And I can't quite remember the number, but it was zero losses. Like they didn't lose a single trade. But you can't lose when you're the one that controls all the markets and you have all order flow and all visibility. It's impossible to lose. How can it's literally impossible? Um, so, you know, you're not Goldman Sachs. You're not these large firms. You're not HSBC. You're a retail trader like me. And so you have to trade and with that knowledge. And so I just want to make sure you guys, you know, have the knowledge and you understand what it is you're walking into because a lot of channels and a lot of people just aren't telling you what's going on. So if you do want to keen to learn about the ins and outs of financial education, about stocks, about how the stuff works, about swing trading, about investing, about how to save, um, about real estate buying, anything dealing with money and generational wealth and just understanding how money works, then subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I know lately I've been making videos, these uh, automated kind of like script videos. Guys, do bear with me on that. I've been making those because I want to try to put out uh, some content that doesn't involve me, quite honestly, speaking a lot on a regular basis. Um, but you know, I do know that a lot of my subscribers, they are subscribing to this channel for financial education when it comes to swing trading and investing. So I, I do promise to continue to make videos about that. I will be making videos about the markets. I will be keeping up to date on that and, call, and talking with you guys about that stuff. But uh, until then, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe, hit the like button, hit the thumbs down button. Hell, I don't care. Just interact with the video. Let me know what you think. Talk to you later. Peace.